Um, now I'll hand over to Dimitrios. Dimitrios, what are you speaking on? Uh, uh, speaking on Scrapey, right? Learning Scrapey, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Well, yeah. please uh, welcome Dimitrios. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you all uh, hear me back in the back? Yes. Everybody good? Good stuff. So today, my name is Dimitrios Kuzis Lukas, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my experience uh, writing uh, this book, uh, Learning Scrapey. And uh, before we start, I would like to ask, uh, like, I think this is a silly question, but is here anybody who is using open source software? Nobody? No. Oh my God. Yeah. I think I'm in the right place. So. Is anybody here who has done any contribution? Small, a part, something to an open source software? Yeah, <laughs> wow, amazing. Is there anybody here who has written uh, some technical text, like a blog post about uh, you know, the, the, their favorite something? Uh, blog post, article, master thesis, PhD? Ah, that's quite good. And uh, uh, how many of you have really written, thought about writing a book secretly or not secretly? Uh, oh, this looks good. And how many of you have actually written a book? Yeah, a lot less. So, uh, <laughs> still a handful. That's, that's impressive. We are in London. Uh, in other cities, there are not that many. But uh, we're in a great place with great opportunities. Uh, that said, uh, all of us are a little bit of technical authors, right? So we have written stuff. Uh, but writing a book is, uh, is a little bit of a different process and this is what uh, I'm going to try to describe you uh, sharing my experiences uh, while writing this book uh, I will also give you some shortcuts and some tips okay some things that will probably uh, save you a year or two while writing your book small tips and uh, of course I will explain you the process because uh, I believe uh, uh, to a great extent we don't know the, ex uh, the process and this is what makes it so scary uh, to start with uh, but why should somebody write a book, right? And uh, it helps the community. So uh, as contributors to open source software, one of the best contributions you can do is actually contribute to a book or write a book potentially. And uh, this, uh, this was the case uh, with Scrappy. Like uh, you can see here, like amazing numbers, like 15,000 stars and forks. And it has been used for, for ages. Uh, right now, I think it's seven or eight years um, after the author started uh, writing it. 2,000, uh, 200 contributors, and uh, it's it's like if you have a community which uh, screams like, please write a book, write a book. I, I can tell you right now, there is only my book out there for the, for this library. Wh why is that? It, 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 the community tells you uh, you waited too long. Just go write a book uh, uh, about this, and uh, it's it's great. Open source is fantastic. Uh, there are so many projects. If you contribute, you might consider it. Uh, the difference. Uh, what kind of slows down a little bit book writing as a uh, initiative is that uh, already many projects have fantastic documentation and uh, when somebody has fantastic documentation the first thing that people tell you is like hey why should you write a book just contribute to the documentation and this is quite true but uh, the documentation is always generic right it has multiple aims uh, it will be a tutorial it will be a reference it will be a little bit of everything and that's exactly what it should be a book uh, will have a specific audience and a specific target it will be to to help you learn this uh, when you are at this level, and I want to take you to that level, so uh, it's always it's always necessary, I would say, despite the fact that there might exist documentation, and it helps the community grow, gives access to audiences that uh, really love books and read them, and also as a manager, it scales learning. As a manager or as a, a teacher, you can tell to your people, uh, just go read this book, and and you will know what this is all about. Now, uh, what it, what is it in it uh, for the author, right? And um, actually, I can see in, from the questions I get here and there, uh, I can see the perception uh, a lot to this one, uh, that it is about the money. Uh, like questions like, how many, how many books did you sell up to now? Which is, uh, it's a funny question a little bit. Also, did you negotiate your contract? Uh, how many dollars do they give you per copy or something? Also a little bit of funny question. And uh, especially in the context I'm talking about today, uh, writing a book for your frame uh, favorite uh, Python framework, the size of your audience is uh, limited by the audience of the framework, essentially, or how much you can expand it in the next like, few years. So if you want to write a bestseller, uh, write Harry Potter. <laughs> not, not a technical book, right? So those numbers don't count. Uh, that They are not the key metric for a book, a technical book uh, on a very specific thing. Also, if you want to write a technical book and it be a bestseller, try Microsoft Office. Uh, another guide, I'm sure it will sell, right? Uh, so 
I, I would say it's, it's not about the money. Uh, I, I haven't received any checks uh, yet. Uh, of course, it's only six months, but who cares? I mean, uh, probably I will use them to write more software. Uh, the pr main reason that we do write books is uh, because it feels good, right? So you get this feeling of uh, contribution, of connection. Uh, you get this uh, feeling of, oh, there is this little territory, this material that I have really mastered, and, and it feels really good, right? More or less, this is uh, also the reason why we write software. And uh, networking, of course, like you get access to some people that you might not have otherwise. Um, because you write on, on the topic that they are interested in. So, how... I can guess what will happen tomorrow, but anyway. How easy is it to start writing a book? Very easy. All you do is you go to any publisher's website, you s uh, search for, uh, you know, proposals or something like that at whateverpublisher.com and you send an email like that. Hello! You can see even, uh, this was kind of naively written, no matter what, it worked. Hello, I'm Dimitris, uh, there is a library called Scra Scrapy, it has lots of users and nobody, there's no book out there, I think it would be a, a cool idea to write a book. And then two hours later I receive a reply, okay, let's do it, uh, send us an outline, a uh, table of contents and, uh, you know, a brief bio and we get us going. So there will be an email, there will be an outline, uh, later there will be, later, I mean like three days later, <laughs> there will be a contract. Uh, people will do a little bit of marketing research, so probably if uh, it's a library with uh, two stars, uh, you might not uh, actually uh, publish at that stage, but anyway. Uh, so there will be some research, you will have the contract and you will have a plan. A plan like, uh, okay, let's write a small book to start with, like let's see if there is any market, a hundred pages, six months, great idea, go do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the plan is not going to work. And why is that? In order to explain you why, I have to tell you a little bit about uh, the, the author's life. Um, I will pretend that I am an instance of an author here, I am, so I will tell you a little bit about my life. It was very easy to, to start in my life, I was born geek apparently, uh, so I first made my first circuit uh, when I was, I don't remember what, you know how it is with those ages, very young anyway. Later I, I wrote my first piece of software in BASIC in order to program my circuits, so the first thing I wrote was a programmer actually. Uh, then uh, I did a master's degree accidentally in applied mathematics and physics. Okay, it was, but it proved to be awesome. We'll talk about this another time. Uh, then uh, I said, like, I want to do my hobby. I really love this thing, so I will go back and study hardware. So I did a master in microelectronic system design in Southampton. And then I started working uh, for ARM in Cambridge, a great company to work with, uh, to work at. Uh, creating microprocessors that everybody here has in their mobile phones, uh, probably seven or ten in each mobile. So amazing thing. So this was my life over there, quite linear, quite predictable, quite perfect or something. And um, suddenly, whoa, um, maybe you could call it burnout, maybe you could call it like, uh, how is it the feeling that you get after you work a long time for one company, uh, one day I quit my company, the company, Arm, and uh, I take the aeroplane and I go to Poland. And, <laughs> and uh, I start being my own boss, you know, I have read a four hour work week and all these books and all this, uh, this great thing. It was a little bit of a hype, maybe also in 2009 around it. So I went like, okay, I will be an entrepreneur, I will uh, run my own business and this is what I was doing, uh, based in uh, Birmingham, writing uh, lots of software, uh, helping lots of people, startups, uh, I can tell you it was tons of wor uh, work, like work, work, work. Uh, you really, people around you really don't know when you work and when you don't work. If you try to do this work at home, wear a hat, say I'm now working and don't talk to me and take the hat out and say now you can speak to me. Uh, if you work from home, this is, uh, this is something you have to do. Later I moved to Budapest and then in Sevilla. Uh, so great stories, <laughs> really lovely. And um, at that point, uh, somewhere, somewhere in the timeline, somewhere over there. Actually, when you are working on your own business, you don't have a clue where you are, if it is up or down, you are somewhere, okay? Uh, and uh, this is when uh, actually I became an author. So it was a strange time of on my life, okay? And um, uh, if you know somebody who came back from work, back home, and said like, oh, today I will write a book, uh, please show this person to me. I think, I think there is nobody. Uh, I think everybody who is starting writing a book is in a weird phase of his life. He has some extra time, he has some confusion, some, uh, you know, freedom to do whatever he wants. 
So this is uh, one of the big reasons why the plan will not go as planned. But there is another big reason, and the big reason is that uh, a book is a product, right? It's very much a product. Uh, you can say software is a product. I don't know if it is or it isn't sometimes when you think it does software as a service, but a book is really a product. It's finalized. Customers hold it at their hands. So the audience, oh, sorry, the audience and your reader are your customer, right? And uh, so you have to start uh, with a normal lean startup mentality uh, with a hypothesis. Who is this customer of mine? And uh, the first thing you think is like, hmm, probably he will be somebody like me. <laughs> this is how you start, like, yeah, makes sense, somebody like me. So uh, this is how you start with your first outline. And you can see here the first title I used. Scrapey, minimum viable product faster than fast. So the idea was, uh, OK, you are a startup, and uh, somehow you need a minimum viable product, and you want to take it out there. Uh, and you can write your nice application stuff, but you don't have data. Obviously, you don't have data. And also, you develop without ha having data, which is like, I test with Hello World. Oh, this is not good. So th the whole concept was like, go, uh, use Scrapy, get data out from the real world. It's not, uh, it's, it's OK, OK? If, if you don't publish them, it's not something like a copy. OK, consult your lawyers. But uh, the point is, you can do it for internal use without people understanding. Get some real data, create a, a nice, cool, minimum viable product that looks mature, you show it to people, they go like, okay, good, I, I get what you're telling me. It's not the same if you have Hello World on this, uh, on this form or this application you're writing. So this was the first uh, outline. And uh, now we'll uh, escape a little bit the chronological order of things. I will start uh, talking a little bit about chapters, which more or less follows. So, so it's a good, uh, a good way to do both at the same time. Uh, so when you start writing a book, the title, table of contents, cover, and the first chapter, it's all marketing material, guys, okay? <laughs> Believe me, it's marketing material. And uh, remember, if you have a mission, if you have uh, uh, a key message that you want to pass to your people, uh, you have this one. And guess what? People will get this message no matter if they buy or not. It will be out there. It will be on Amazon. It will be discussed on, on social media. So if you really have a message, here it is. Make it, uh, make it your title. Put it on your cover. Put it on your, on your introduction. Make your table of contents flow. Make sure sentences. Make sure that when somebody reads your table of contents, he goes like, whoa, I, I want this book. I want this book. OK? And then you, the, the reader will go to the next step to buy the book. Otherwise, that was all the discussion you could have th with the reader. Here's my title. Oh, I'm very um, reserved. Uh, I'm very safe. I have a very safe title. Uh, no, 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 no. So consult your marketing friends or your sales friends. Get a title that works. Get a cover that works. Um, and uh, convince people to read more if you really believe in the cause. And now it's the point to introduce you, introduce you the editor. Who is the editor? Uh, the editor is uh, a guy who sends you every now and then some annoying emails. Like, uh, when will you send me chapter 7 or so chapter 3? I think we're a li little bit behind the schedule and stuff like that. So on the very basic concept, uh, an editor is a project manager for your project. He has skin on the game. Uh, he, really, he really wants the book delivered. And uh, he might or might not have a clue about the specific thing you are working. Highly likely he will not. So the point is uh, an editor might have an area of expertise like Java but he will not know the specific, specific framework. So it's not always wise to consult him for, for technical stuff. You are the author, and I will come back to this point. Uh, so at some point, the editor comes and tells me, uh, OK, good, I, I have read your drafts and stuff. Uh, so would you mind putting a few extra pages, explain to people what a URL is? What? <laughs> what a URL is? So it might sound uh, funny. But for me, this was like a, a big, like, I don't know the customer. I thought that the customer was like me. After all, he's not like me. I mean, partly, he's not like me. He's probably something which is uh, 14 years old, and he has written some programs, but uh, he's not an expert. He, even a URL is not quite clear to him. Uh, and uh, thank, <laughs> thanks a lot to the editor for giving that perspective. Again, customer discovery. Uh, and remember that from uh, an editor's perspective, a uh, beginner's audience is like a, a, a gold mine, right? So if there are that many experts, 
uh, beginners are lots, it's a much wider audience. So if you, in your life, you write just a single book, make sure that you target the widest uh, audience possible, write it uh, so that it's beginner friendly. Okay? So I start with uh, my first, um, uh, my first like beginner friendly chapters, chapter two, basic rolling, a little bit of introduction, what is XPath terminology, how to install the software, uh, some background knowledge so we can go fast. And essentially those are a little bit tutorial like. So, uh, okay, you see a website, you want the data, how do you do it, how do you create the expressions? So you end up with the data on a file more or less by chapter three. Um, but this is not enough, this is not what this book was about. Uh, data on Excel spreadsheet is not very inspiring. Uh, you want something a little bit more and this is why in chapter 4 I use a I, I don't want to teach them web development or mobile development But I use a service called Aperi.io or something like that so they can quickly drag and drop some stuff It has the, its own database. They run Scrapy Data goes into their database and here it is within like 13 pages I can tell them you can create a mobile application so you can demonstrate uh, your data and here it is minimum, minimum viable product uh, so, s for everybody who wants uh, to do something with the data, here you are, uh, chapter 4. And uh, this has an interesting thing, like, if you think uh, you're in chapter 4, and you didn't have the opportunity to tell people how to write stuff in databases, make REST API calls, actually, you have just a beginner, you have taught him some things, uh, but how, how do you do it? And the answer is, it's a great thing to write open source software. It's a great thing to, to be contributing on those communities. It's a great thing to be writing Python. Why? Because uh, you can, uh, all the things that are complicated for this level, all the things like um, complicated hacky code, boilerplate code, uh, or uh, you know, code that really is ugly, you, want, you don't want to put this on paper. So also with hardware design, we were doing a partitioning between what we put into hardware and what we put into software. The same thing goes with a book. Book is like the hardware, it's out there, you cannot modify it. Be careful what you put there. Make sure, as, as the previous uh, uh, presentation said, uh, make sure that it reads like poetry, what you have in book. And all, and all the other ugly stuff, put it in a library. <laughs> so, in future versions also, when Scrappy updates, the API changes, you can go back and change it as well without uh, people having to, uh, to do any changes. The, the book will be there, I don't know, forever, but for a long time. So, upload a, a, a Python library in uh, Py, PyPy, and then you are done. And this is how I can, uh, in chapter 4, show them this thing. And you know, uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, I have written, I have actually given my editor some uh, really first drafts of something and he comes and says okay uh, 100 pages we are done we are what <laughs> we, we are yeah we're done don't worry uh, let's let's get it through review but, but yeah let's get it through review what are those things that can happen <laughs> okay <laughs> So here's the reviewer. Uh, may, I, I didn't ask this question, but I believe, and I hope many of you here are reviewers of books. And um, um, a book reviewer is, uh, uh, is very important, very hard to find, because the reviewer has to have expertise, domain expertise. He has to know Scrapy, potentially, but at the very least he has to know good Python, right? Uh, he has limited time. He's probably a professional who does a full-time job and then in the afternoon he will check your book or something. Uh, he's, not, uh, he's almost always not a single uh, reviewer. There are more, so think of uh, the reviewer as a persona. And um, he has to be bad. A, a good reviewer is, is a bad reviewer, a guy who will tell you, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. Uh, if the guy comes and tells you, oh, everything looks awesome, actually he didn't help you to write a good book. Uh, so you want somebody who has a attention to the detail and, uh, and can give you nice feedback. He is the proxy to the customer. And uh, so uh, here I come and uh, I get some comments. I put the most polite comments over here. Like uh, I had a, a little bit, I wanted to show people how to use Rackspace so they can get their things directly to, uh, to the cloud because it's important for a startup in my mind. Uh, Obviously, I removed this later, but he goes like, uh, Rackspace uh, actually called the home and woke up my wife at 2 a.m. <laughs> okay, uh, scrap installation, I installed it on my Mac and it gave 32 warnings during installation. Okay, <laughs> and what should I do about it? Uh, <laughs> do you have permissions to crawl this website? Th that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I, I haven't thought about this one, okay? Uh, and uh, and um, 
uh, the, the thing is, like uh, this guy self-identifies himself as a person that, uh, in terms of knowledge of Python, on a grade of one to ten, he's on eight. So actually, he's quite strong guy, and uh, I can claim that he's not my target audience. So this is not good. You want somebody who is good but is in your target audience, okay? But anyway, I get back uh, to this. Uh, the point is that. Um, he gave me the perspective of, of this, uh, this guy, who, uh, part of the audience, who knows his stuff really well. And um, actually, you don't want to annoy him. Probably he will, uh, teach, he will read your book, he will not uh, learn much, but you don't want to annoy him. So for example, every now and then I was doing the mistake of uh, mentioning Python lists as arrays. This was pissing him off. He was going like, what the hell? Like, how can I trust you that you know what you're talking about? This is Python, you should, uh, you should name it as list. Okay. And uh, some things that I have seen, like in books I have reviewed, actually, like uh, somebody thought that it's funny to uh, talk about models and put a female model on a, on a on a photo, and I'm like, okay, good, but this doesn't sell that well in US and UK, so be careful. Uh, or an another thing, like a book is not exactly the best uh, place to bitch about management. So I say, like, we are the developers, you are the managers. It's easy to write a book <laughs> like that, right? You might be angry, but it's not a good idea to, to go like, oh, those and us. So forget about those and us. Uh, because somebody will be a manager, he will be reading your book, right? And you don't want to make him uh, negative. So it's all about being a little bit careful on your phrasing and on your writing. Uh, but at this point, I have uh, the editor more or less telling me, this is your book, you got it uh, wrong. Uh, there is no audience, and I'm so sorry. And uh, you know, you have to do lots of changes and stuff like that. So. Uh, it actually it was his ideas, most of the stuff, like the length and uh, let's make it more beginner friendly. No, you ha we are missing code, we need code. Anyway, so at some point uh, we are, you know, our relationship stopped being uh, that good. I realized that as an author, I am on my own and this is what you have to remember. You are responsible for what you put out there, uh, no matter how, people, how many people contribute. It's, it's your name and your reputation which is uh, at stake. Uh, so at that point I, I changed the um, publisher and it was uh, that simple, just one email again, uh, scrappy book that I will not publish with ABC, guys I have a very nice book, it's attached and uh, uh, you know I will, um, I will not publish with uh, those guys for, that and, uh, for this and that very specific reason, I would publish with you. As you can imagine like half a day later, yeah okay let's do it. Okay so I have a, a new a brand new editor, publisher and everything. And now with the new understanding of who the customer is, I re-review all the material, add extra 150 pages and a few years you know, of writing and uh, here is my new book, drop the title, minimum viable product and all this, now I understand nonsense. And we have the, uh, the learning scrappy book, uh, chapters five to nine, uh, full of very technical, uh, very deep, like. I really, <laughs> I really love the material, and they are like cool material, mastering internals of Scrapey. Uh, and I would say that uh, in there you will find stuff that is not a stack overflow, especially with Scrapey, it's uh, written on top of Twisted, it's asynchronous, so in stack overflow you will hear lots of advice that is complete nonsense and kills performance. <laughs> so uh, don't, try, try to at the very least uh, if you want, like copy paste a few of the things from this book to Stack Overflow so that we make it a little bit more reliable uh, in, in that sense uh, for this chapter, uh, f for this um, particular case. Uh, so um, the guys who started Scrappy, they have a startup um, and uh, it's called Scrapping Hub. Chapter 6, so a few pages I devoted to him, I th uh, them, I think they deserve it. So you have a spider uh, run it in the, in the cloud using their cloud, quite cool. Um, and then. Uh, I want to tell you a little secret here. If you have heard about uh, new technologies, you know, everybody is very enthusiastic. Think uh, about deep learning, for example. Um, everybody getting, wow, this is the solution for everything. Then there is this phase of disillusionment. Actually, it works uh, with images and stuff. It doesn't work with some other stuff. Then it's the enlightenment, going like, okay, I know what it works. And, uh, setting the expectations right, really. And then there's the productivity where really, uh, you know, it becomes a de facto technology. This happens with everything. And uh, the same thing used to happen with me, with every single chapter. Okay, so I was starting like, this is going to be the best chapter, this will be, it's, it's amazing, it's the most important. Then I was thinking like, you know, in my brain, graphs and uh, this is cool, I should put this and that. And then I was getting an empty page, writing the first sentence, and I was like, 
<laughs> okay, this will take uh, a few months longer than I expected. So this was my usual uh, experience. Uh, but in chapter 7, because uh, it is configuration, it has to be there, it's important for, for the user, but for me, like, configuration is, is also covered quite well in the documentation. It's not something that I'm really that passionate about. So um, I thought about trying another approach. So what I did is, as long as I had an outline and the, and the backbone of the chapter, I just uh, hired a few people to write some drafts. Okay, in the form of a uh, write me a tutorial explaining uh, this setting and that setting and that setting. And th then when I got the, uh, when I got the drafts back, uh, s suddenly I, I skipped all this part of the pain. Because somehow my creative mind worked much better when I had to synthesize things that might be of moderate quality, some of good quality, but it was much easier to, to create this chapter than any other chapter. Uh, and uh, and um, it, it allowed me to, to focus on what an author is there really about, uh, to put a kind of, of the poetry, to put a, a, the good example, to, to distinguish between the important and non-important things. So I, I managed to uh, think about it. If you write a, if you write a book, um, consider this approach as well. Okay, it's not ghostwriting. It's just getting some drafts. It saves lots of time. Uh, so, uh, chapter 9 was a little bit of a pain because it uses Elasticsearch, Redis, MySQL, uh, several of, the, of those technologies. And uh, trust me, when you write a book, you have to explain to people, if you are an honest person, how to install those things. And you have to explain that on Windows, on Mac, on all versions of Linux and Unix. Uh, you don't have the space, but still you want to give some cool examples, right? So you, you want to, to use MySQL, but you don't want to write about how to install MySQL. And this is where I was lucky, because those technologies started being mature enough, so I could use them in my book. So right now, I, uh, my, my, my readers just do Vagrant app. They download uh, a few gigabytes, okay? <laughs> and then they have uh, nine SSH terminals uh, SSH into different, uh, different servers. So something that looks a lot what they will face in the production, something realistic, okay? And, um, and it works in the airport, works offline. I put in there even the web server that gives a fake website. So this problem of uh, do you have permission to crawl that site is also solved. And, and it's, it's fantastic, guys. Copy paste those techniques. It's, they're also related to reproducible research. Use Vagrant. Everybody must, uh, right now we have the technologies to go like, here is a box, click a few buttons, and, uh, and you can reproduce with zero support. You can have your customers using your stuff. Then uh, I, I have to tell you that by that stage, I was a different author. So yes, the editor came and said, uh, maybe we can cut some edges, you know, we can release before uh, December. Uh, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, my reputation is at stake. I will be next to the two stars on Amazon. You will not be there, right? So I will take my time, I will do the thing the way I want. And this is what brought kind of the last piece of the customer in my awareness, okay, which is like my manager, my friend, myself, like us, right? You want to write a book and at the very least have something about people that you love. And uh, so <laughs> physics, right? So I created a, a model of Scrapy, a complete uh, performance model, URLs, flow like, uh, like water through the pipeline, downloading here where the bottleneck is, and more or less with this pixel you know more about Scrappy performance than uh, most other people around here. How to debug it exactly, so if you have slow performance, like what metric you, you should see and what you should uh, hack, really there's no information reliable on the internet. Where are the bottlenecks? Uh, again, one of the biggest problem, you will always say my server is not strong enough. It's not your server, it's actually you don't do the scraper enough work to do. You have to scrape the indexes much faster than you consume the URLs through the pipeline. And um, scrap, uh, chapter 11, uh, distributed crawling, everybody was asking about that. Again, Stack Overflow, most of the uh, replies are wrong. They are thinking per item, I will, uh, I will have an item, I will get it through my pipeline. Uh, no, this is not how it works. Actually, you have to think something closer to what Apache Spark has, which is micro batches. Put things on S3 or something, and then put a URL to Kafka, a link to the file, and go and process many of them. This is the only way Scrapy will give you the performance you, uh, you expect. In a, in a mid-range server, actually a slow one, uh, I achieved the kind of 700 uh, uh, pages per second, which is amazing. Appendix, help your beginners and at very least, ha least have a reference to tell them like what you ask is in page 230. Production, you are over there, you have handed up the final drafts, it's not ready yet, 
PDFs will come back and uh, they will be full of mistakes, uh, text will be broken, especially for people here, uh, you speak much better English uh, than uh, people who proofread your book sometimes, okay? They will damage some of your text. Uh, don't remember, you are the author, you have the responsibility. Diagrams might be cut or low resolution, tell them to fix them. Uh, code, 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 read it, go stupid, I don't know how, make your brain not work copy paste all the code and make sure that it works especially in python where spaces count uh, okay so be very careful with the the code and after all this one day you will be really proud and happy to see yourself on amazon great days and uh overall summarizing it's all about the customer all about understanding who the reader is he's many people he's not just one uh, the main audience is, is people who are, this is independent on the depth of the book. You might be writing something extremely specific. Again, there will be high-end people and the masses, right? So take the masses from there and bring them up. This is how your book is really judged. You start somewhere over there, you will end up somewhere over there. You will not be an expert, but you will know some stuff. Probably your environment is somewhere like that, so don't be fooled. You are not exactly writing for your environment. You really sell to those guys, these are your managers or whatever. So if you think about career and stuff, uh, make sure that you send the right messages there. Uh, do not offend these guys, the high-end guys. Do not p say a race instead of police, okay? Uh, and uh, the guys who are really on top, they have no problem. They get the vision, they go like, do whatever you want, I can see the benefit. And for all of you uh, here, try to contribute. Uh, this is my main message today. Uh, write a book on your favorite uh, scrappy framework. Uh, be the author, be the co-author. Don't forget, four co-authors, no problem. No problem. It's not fair somebody did more work than the other. Who cares? Who cares? If it's not something completely unfair, unfair if somebody said, like, I will write and disappear, just put a few co-authors. It's not that bad. Uh, be reviewers. Very important. You here have the expertise. Be reviewers on books. Uh, and be polite. Uh, <laughs> okay? Because uh, we want the books to go out. So, so find an, a nice balance to be polite and review books really harshly. Give valuable feedback. And also support the authors in the sense of uh, you know, if you hear somebody writing a book, go and say like, okay, cool, uh, how can I help you? Or um, something like, do you need uh, this change in the code that will help you? Send me a draft. Make it open. Uh, the industry is a little bit secretive, but make it open. I think we can do it. And so, after all this, let's make the world a better place. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, thank you. So, how do you answer the question? Can I scrape this website? So, uh, how did I actually? A question. Uh, so, the point is. Um, Everybody is a little bit on his own and there is a whole universe of data and copyrights and stuff like that um, You have to as a company whoever scrapes has to have their lawyers Hopefully go ask them and make sure that you negotiate in advance Okay, and this is a good thing about scraping it makes you think about the ecosystem You go like I get uh, data from those guys. Can I trust them? Could we col collaborate? So early you do that uh, What I did in terms of the book is uh, I just did some statistics on top of what I scraped and then I created with Monte Carlo simulated pages and you can see the co source code in there So at the end what I give uh, to my readers is completely uh, copyright free uh, But it follows uh, the the format and all the expats are exactly the same uh, With expats that you can use the actual it is Gumtree the actual website uh, So it is both real realistic, but we don't hit the website and also this makes it available offline, right? So I can be in the airport. I can hit my own web server So I think uh, this is uh, more or less the best solution can do but uh, yes, it's a good thing like uh, I go a little bit more because of the light. Um, keep in mind that data is important and uh, get your lawyers ready or do the negotiations about data early enough uh, because it's an important issue. Okay, and for the final question, is it a quick question? <laughs> Shut up, I'll repeat it. <laughs> Okay, so what is the tool used to write the book? 
yeah every every publisher ha has their own thing and uh, it gets a little bit messy because some of the tools they use are not straightforward so uh, at the end you end up learning you know ASCII doc or whatever like one flavor and if you want to change publisher it, it is not completely open I can see an opportunity there but it's not completely open you cannot go like okay I don't like this publisher I go to another one so there will be re-markup needed to be done but to be honest uh, there is uh, it's, it's markup you learn it um, after a while it probably takes one day two days uh, you, you put markup the images are important they're a complete different story uh, images keep them in uh, whatever the source is so you can always create higher quality always use vector and um, actually they typically go inside the draft very late right they integrate get integrated late uh, so the tools are a little bit of, the, of a pain but not the biggest pain thank you thank you